Probably the biggest headline feature for the Mocha Pro 4 release was the addition of a 3D stereoscopic workflow. So let's take a look at how that actually works in practice. Let's start up a new project and choose our first clip. And I'm going to take my train left view here. And let's now add our second view. So we're going to take the right view here, hit OK on that. So now we have two streams coming in. So by the format tab, we also have our views tab. And this is where we can tell Mocha that we are going to be working with this in a multi-view project. So we currently have two views, our left and our right, with the abbreviation of L and R. We can change these up if we want to. What we could also do is change up the color of the windows that's going to indicate our left and our right here. But I'm just going to leave these at the default red and green for the moment. And what we also want to do is we want to define what our hero view is going to be. So which is the view that we're going to be working with most. And this is completely shot dependent. But here we're just going to stick with the, uh, the left view. Last thing is to give this a name. We'll call this one Ben1. Hit OK and we'll just load that in. Now the footage that we're using for this tutorial is coming from the RMIT 3DV library. And is available to download there. Now, if we take a look up at the top at our viewers, we have our left view, our right view, and you can see as we click through these that we are working with stereoscopic 3D files, so the offset is slightly different. And we can also use the keyboard shortcut of one and two just to toggle between those views as well. What we also have up here is our 3D view here. And so at this point, we can choose how we're going to view our 3D clip. If we have, uh, we can view it uh, interlaced. So depending on your system, this is going to show you the, the right view, or we have an active 3D monitoring system set up, then we can choose active. You can also set this uh, anaglyph as well and choose whatever flavor you want. So red cyan or green magenta. And this gives you a quick and cheap way of, uh, of testing out your, your 3D file there. What we also have is our difference view, and this is going to be useful later if we need to manually uh, figure out the offset between these two streams of video. But for now, we will uh, well, we'll keep with the anaglyph so you can actually see what's going on here, but I'll turn the 3D off. All right, so let's come in and create our first couple of shapes. What I'm going to do, if we play this clip through, what I'm going to do is just quickly um, create a, a little roto spline of the front of this train here. And at the moment, I'm just going to treat this like a normal monoscopic piece of footage. So I'm going to create my track mat, which is going to go over the girder here. So I'm just making sure that this doesn't, or this, this bit won't actually come in and be part of the, uh, of the track. So I'll call this one girder slash track mat TM. I don't need to track this because it stays static. I'll just lock this in place though. Let's create my second shape. So let's uh, take the top here. So let's just create the, uh, the front of the train there. Uh, let's color code this up a little bit so we can see this a bit better. Let's make this a nice little yellow. Lovely. And let's bring this underneath our track mat and call this one train front track there we go and let's just take a look at our selected track mats turn that on and you can see now the girder is being cut out from our train front so when the front bit tracks the space being used by the girder won't feature in any of the results so that's uh, going to work out nicely for us there let's take a quick look though at the right hand view now we haven't done anything else yet and you can see that we don't have an offset going on at this moment, our shape is sat in exactly the same place as it was in the left-hand view. So left-hand view, right-hand view, left, right. But that's fine. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I'm going to start to come down and track it. Now let's have a little look what's coming in down here by the track sign. We have one more little button that uh, says left and right on it. it. looks like a little butterfly. And it says enable to operate on all views. So we're going to track all views here. This means that when we go to track this forwards, this is going to track the same shape on both views, both the left and the right view simultaneously. 
and let's now switch over to our right hand view and you'll see that our view or that our shape has actually now come along and moved over so Mocha has figured out the offset between that shape on those two particular streams. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's turn the tracking off on that now. And I'm just gonna show you what would happen if I didn't have that turned on. So let's track the top of this here. Let's uh, bring that down underneath the girder. We'll call this one train top dash track. And we'll give this a different color. We will give this a bright green. I'm gonna turn off my enable track on both views and track this forwards instead. Let's let's look, that's still offset there. Let's track that forwards. And you'll see now it's actually it's still tracked that on the right hand view. But I don't have that offset going on. So now we've got it tracked but not offset. So we can manually do this offset. So let's uh, let's take a look at how that's going to work. Uh, one of the things we can do is just do a bit of a scrub there and sort of eyeball it. Eyeballing it is gonna work, but it's not gonna be the most effective. And one of the biggest reasons to do this automatically or to let, let Mocha do it is to sort of avoid any of the small little changes that, that are gonna maybe sort of mess us up a little bit further down, down the line when we actually want to do some compositing with these shapes. The other way of doing it is if we come back to this 3D that I was talking about earlier, go to our difference mode, click on that, and we get get this uh, get this weird view going on, and that what we're trying to do is make sure that those two views end up as solid grey as possible. And I can change the position. If I'm feeling brave, I can start to play with the rotation, uh, the scale, and the shear as well. Now, I would recommend that wherever you can, you'd let Mocha do this. Uh, do this particular job by doing the uh, enable to operate on all views because it's generally speaking going to give us a more accurate sort of result but we do have you know shear and perspective stuff that we can be uh, be playing around with as well in this case the position's given us a, a decent enough result so i turn off my difference mode and i can just go through between the left and the right Now, when this object comes closer to us, that position is going to change up a little bit, so the uh, so we can come back into our stereo there and change the offset, and this will now keyframe between those two. So we take a look. That position is now holding a bit better than it was previously. Cool. Well, the other thing we've got to worry about now is how Mocha's gonna handle keyframe changes in the shape itself. Let's turn off that and lock our train top. And we'll turn off visibility on everything apart from the front so we can sort of see this a bit better. Let's just zoom in a wee bit there. Okay, so I'm back in the left-hand view. I'm back in the hero view here. Now the hero view is where I'd recommend we do most of our work. So if I wanted to now come in and make adjustments to this and to uh, to tighten things up because currently we've just got this set as a as a as a track if we wanted to use this one actually as a shape just rename this here um we can start to do that but as i play around with this here now in my left hand view let's take a look what's going on with the right hand view that all looks good that's still looking good and that's because we're on our hero view so let's move this over a little bit here. And what I'll do is I'll come up and I'll add another point in here. Bring that up there. There we go. Back into our picker tool. And let's do something a little bit weird on this one. Let's move this out here and check what's going on on the right hand side. And that's still updating because what we're doing is we're changing things on our hero view. So when we move to our other views, all those changes are gonna be updated automatically. But what happens if I change something on my right hand view here? Let's bring this one back. Now this is my non hero view. Let's switch between the left and right. Okay, this has got a bit interesting. 
Now, because I've changed things on my non-hero view here, that hasn't updated it on my left-hand view. It's only updated it on the right-hand view. And if we look down at the timeline here, we can see, if I move this away, we've got two different types of keyframe. Our green keyframe, which is the one we've set for the left-hand view, and that is pointing to the left. And we have our red, which is for the right-hand view, which is pointing to the right. Okay, let's move this over here for a second. Now, if we want to directly modify the uh, control points in both views, when working in either view, we turn on this button down here. It's under the key controls, and this is the apply keyframe changes to all views. So I'm working in the right-hand view. Let's come over here, bring this one back here, and you can see now it's made a green left pointing arrow and a red right pointing arrow. So this split left and right keys here. And we can see, we can easily see actually which, um, which view we're working in at any time because check out the, uh, the red arrow here. We're in the right hand view. So currently the right arrow keyframes are solid. If I turn us back into the left hand view, you'll see that now my green left facing arrows are solid here. Now the most common workflow that we're gonna be using here is gonna be about coming in, working in the hero view to, uh, to do most of the hard work here, just doing all those shapes and then coming into the non-hero view at the very end and just doing any sort of the small sort of changes that we need to make. If I do make a big pig's ear of a particular keyframe here, I can always delete that particular key and that's gonna take my non-hero view back to what the hero view was before. So here, once again, just updating the non-hero view. Check out the check out the difference in the hero view goes up, then comes back in, following the keyframes here, and in the non-hero view, the one I've just changed, because I've got this keyframe here locking that one back in, that now works independently of the hero until it gets to the the next keyframe where it's going to go back to following the hero shot. Cool, well let's just, uh, let's bring this in here, come back to my right here and delete that keyframe so everything's working out quite nicely. All right, now when it comes to exporting our data, we have to be aware of what our host program is capable of. So let's export out the tracking data first. Uh, and let's come over, we'll do an After Effects transform data to begin with, and we'll do this on our train front. And you can see that I can take out either my left or right view here. And at this point, I'm just treating it like normal tracking data. So copying it to the clipboard, let's come into After Effects. And in After Effects, I have a, uh, a simple sort of camera rig set up here. So I'm gonna come into my left eye view, come to my text, and let's just paste that tracking data in there. So that's looking good there. Come back into Mocha, export out the tracking data one more time, this time taking out the right hand view, copy that to the clipboard, back into After Effects, over into my right hand view here, come in, edit, paste that in, take a look back at the stereo view again, and we can now play that back in stereo just to check that that's working out how we need it to. And we could do the same sort of thing with the mats as well. So, you know, if we needed to take the shape data out of our girder here, you know, export out that shape data, take it into Mocha Shape data for After Effects, take out the left-hand view first, selected layer, copy that to the clipboard, over into our left-hand view, Let's create a nice little track mat. So let's do it properly. Come in, call this one track mat girder. Edit, paste mocha mask. And then set the track mat on the text to be alpha inverted. And that will cut out that there. Do the same on the other eye. There's currently no way of uh, speeding up this process. It is a bit of a, a manual kind of job. But at the end of it, we would now have our a little stereo text and shape data come through. But if we're taking out the tracking data to another programs, for example, Nuke, take out the Nuke 7 tracker, 
we can export out all views and they'll come through as a single node. It's a single track node for you to work with. If you don't want that, then you can just choose, you know, left or right view, depending on what you need. And the same goes for the shape data as well. We can take out the left and right view separately or export all views to a, uh, to a single node. So that's the basic workflow for stereoscopic work in Mocha Pro 4. Working with our multiple footage streams, and if we come into the clip, we can change the view mapping here. If we make a mistake, we want to change the, the clip over left and right. So yeah, working with our multiple view streams here, then coming through, making our track, tracking either in both views or just in a single view and using the stereo offset, the manual stereo offset there and doing the same type of thing when doing the rotoscoping work, working mainly in the hero view to set the first series of keyframes, then making any small adjustments you need in the non-hero view to ensure you get the best possible result from both your track and your roto data.